Welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. It's me, Miss Green, and we are going to continue the work that we started in our last lesson. I'm so glad you're here. Before we get started, go ahead and make sure you have all the materials that you will need for today's lesson. You'll need either your packet, um, if you have one, or just a piece of paper will do, and a pen or a pencil. And you will, of course, need a turn and talk partner. And your turn and talk partner can be anyone. If you have someone around that wants to continue doing this work with you, that's great. A family member, um, a pet will do just fine. Or go ahead and call up whomever you've been talking to in your imagination. Go ahead and call up Russell Wilson and continue to talk to him. I bet he's really excited to know what's going to happen in the story next. Um, so have those things ready. Today we are going to continue to read Somebody Loves You, Mr. Hatch by Eileen Spinelli. I want you to take a moment and think back. What happened in our story last time? What has happened so far? Turn to your partner. So, so far in the story, we met Mr. Hatch, and Mr. Hatch does not smile a lot, and he sticks to his routine. He uh, is by himself most of the time, but then something happens. He receives a package. He receives a box of candy and a note that says, somebody loves you, and you can tell he starts to get really excited about that. He can't focus on his cleaning because he's so excited and he is so curious about who sent him this box of chocolates. So he decides to go out into the world. He puts on a tie and he goes out and people are shocked to see him out. And that's where we left off. We were also wondering, we were wondering, is he going to make friends with the people that he meets while he's out there? Um, so we're going to continue to think about that question as well as new questions that come up as we read. So go ahead and grab your questions from last time as well as a new stop and ask questions paper. If you have the packet, you'll find another one in there. But if you don't have the packet, that's fine. You can just create your own like I did. So today as I read, I'll be stopping several times to ask questions. Questioning helps us think deeply about what we're reading. And it helps us be curious about what's going to happen next to Mr. Hatch. On Monday, it was back to work. At lunchtime, Mr. Hatch sat in the middle of the cafeteria. He spoke to everyone and passed out chocolates from his heart box. On the way home, as usual, he stopped at the newsstand. Mr. Smith handed him the usual newspaper. I think I'll have a pack of mints, said Mr. Hatch, not as usual. Mr. Smith was shocked. Was that you speaking, Mr. Hatch? Indeed it was, said Mr. Hatch. I said, I would also like a pack of mints. And if you don't mind me saying so, Mr. Smith, you don't look very well today. Mr. Smith recovered from his shock and replied, you're right, I don't feel very well. I have a cold. I was supposed to go to the doctor's this afternoon, but the stand has been so busy, I haven't had the time. Mr. Hatch smiled. Why, I'd be happy to watch the stand for you while you go. Mr. Smith could hardly believe his ears. You would? Certainly. Just show me what to do. And so Mr. Hatch ran the newsstand for an hour. He wondered if any of the women who stopped to buy a paper or a magazine or a candy bar had sent him the mysterious valentine.
When Mr. Smith returned, Mr. Hatch made his usual stop at the grocery store. I'm a little tired of turkey wings, he told Mr. Todd. I think I'll have a nice fresh slice of ham. Mr. Todd weighed the meat and wrapped it. You look worried, said Mr. Hatch. I am, said Mr. Todd. My little girl is late. She hasn't come home from school yet, and I can't leave the store to look for her until my wife arrives. What questions can you ask about the story so far? Stop and jot. I'm wondering if Mr. Hatch is going to offer to help Mr. Todd the way he offered to help the man that works at the newsstand. You look worried, said Mr. Hatch. I am, said Mr. Todd. My little girl is late and she hasn't come home from school yet and I can't leave the store to look for her until my wife arrives. Goodness, why didn't you say so, said Mr. Hatch. I will go look for her. And so he walked to school and found little Melanie Todd by the swings and brought her home. Thank you, thank you, said the grocer. Any time, said Mr. Hatch. After supper, Mr. Hatch did not bother to read the paper. He decided to bake brownies instead. It would be nice to have brownies to share the next day with the people at the shoelace factory. As he baked, the warm chocolate smell of brownies floated through the neighborhood. Children gathered round Mr. Hatch's house, sniffing the air. Well, I suppose the factory can wait, said Mr. Hatch as he looked out the window, and he brought out two platefuls. Now, what are brownies without lemonade, he said, and he stirred up a nice cold pitcher. When the parents came to gather their children, they had some brownies, too. It turned out to be a picnic in Mr. Hatch's backyard. He dusted off an old harmonica and played songs he remembered from his boyhood. Everybody danced. What questions can we ask about the story now? I'm wondering if Mr. Hatch is starting to make some friends. It turned out to be a picnic in Mr. Hatch's backyard. He dusted off an old harmonica and played songs he remembered from his boyhood. Everyone danced. And so the days and weeks went by. When Mr. Hatch wasn't smiling, he was laughing. And when he wasn't laughing, he was helping someone. And when he wasn't helping someone, he was having a party in his yard or on his porch. He seemed to have forgotten about finding the person who sent him the valentine. Then, 
One afternoon, Mr. Goober, the postman, came to his door. His face was very serious. Come in, Mr. Goober, said Mr. Hatch. You look upset. I am upset, he said. I made a mistake some time ago. My supervisor is very angry with me. Do you, do you, yes, Mr. Goober, what is it? Do you recall the package I delivered to you on Valentine's Day, I think it was? Yes, I believe so, replied Mr. Hatch, beginning to feel a little uneasy. What question can you ask about the story now? Stop and jot. So I'm wondering and feeling really nervous about what was the mistake that Mr. Goober made? Ugh, we'll have to read to find out. Do you recall the package I delivered to you on Valentine's Day, I think it was? Yes, I believe so, replied Mr. Hatch, beginning to feel a little uneasy. I don't suppose you still have it, said Mr. Goober sadly. As a matter of fact, said Mr. Hatch, I still have the box. The candy is gone, though. Why do you ask? The postman took a deep breath. I'm afraid I delivered it to the wrong address. It was supposed to go to another house. Oh. And that's where we're going to stop until next time. So... I would like you to take a look over your questions that you wrote today, and I'd like you to also look at the questions that you wrote last time. Look over all your questions so far and put a check mark next to any question that you think was answered in the story today. Sometimes the answer to a question is given right in the text. Sometimes an answer is not given in the text, but you can figure it out using clues from the text. So let's look at the questions that I wrote today. And I put a check mark next to two of them. One question I asked is, is Mr. Hatch starting to make new friends? Now, that question wasn't answered directly in the text, but I think that I was able to get some clues that helped me figure out that yes, he is making new friends. When I was reading about him baking brownies and about how people were coming to his yard and to his party and um, he was serving them brownies and he was serving them lemonade. I think that was a clue that he's starting to make friends. And then it also said that he was laughing and helping people and having parties in his backyard or on his porch. All of that makes me think that he was starting to make friends with his neighbors. It, wasn't, it didn't come right out and say in the text that he was making friends, but those clues from the text helped me figure it out. Now, another question I asked was, what mistake did Mr. Goober make? And I found out that the mistake he made was that that Valentine wasn't for Mr. Goober. He delivered it to the wrong house. So that was answered directly in the text. It told me that Mr. Goober brought the Valentine to the wrong house.
Now I want you to look at the questions that you marked on your paper with a check. And I want you to think about which one of those questions was answered directly in the text. Turn to your partner. Which of your questions was answered indirectly using clues from the text? Turn to your partner. What have you learned about our character, Mr. Hatch, so far in the story? Turn to your partner. What I've learned about Mr. Hatch is at the beginning of the story, he seemed to stick to himself. He seemed a little bit lonely, um, but throughout the story, I've noticed that he's been changing. And that's something that happens a lot in fiction. That's another element of fiction, is that our character can change over time. I've noticed that he's gotten a lot more friendly and happy because of this um, Valentine that mysteriously showed up on his porch. However, in the end of today's reading, we found out that it wasn't meant for him. I'm wondering how he's going to react to that. Uh, we'll have to wait and find out next time. The suspense is killing me. Excellent job today, friends. Um, I'm really proud of the work that you're doing and the questions that you're asking. Make sure to put these questions you've asked so far somewhere safe because you will need them for our next lesson. Now it's time for IDR. We're going to continue to read fiction today, a made-up story. You can read any genre of fiction that you would like as long as you're reading a made-up story. I'm going to continue to read about Matilda, which I started last time. Um, I learned some things about Matilda in my reading. I, was, uh, I learned that she is super smart. Matilda learned to read when she was three and a half years old. She's really smart. But I also learned that her parents are, first of all, they're crooks. They're always swindling people. And they are not impressed by her and her brain. They actually think that her brain is really annoying. They tell her to watch more TV and read less books, which I can't imagine. Um, so I am wondering, as I continue to read, I'm wondering how they are going to try to make her more like them and to change her from being so smart and curious. I'm going to be reading today to look for the answer to that question. I'd like you to read and I'd like you to stop and ask questions and then look for the answers to your questions as you read. Thank you for joining me today. I'm really um, happy that you're here and impressed that you're choosing to continue this learning from home and I will see you next time.